Welcome back to Ask the Good Doctor on Sirius XM Urban View, Channel 126. I am Dr. LaJoyce Brookshire. As you know, I am a proponent for nutritional supplements for the body because we are constantly bombarded by toxins in the world we live in today. We just are. I have recently been introduced to a new product called Revita Blue, and it is a stem cell nutrient. Since I have been taking it, well, first of all, you all know that I'm not going to tell you about anything that I haven't first taken myself. So me and my family, we are, yes, we are guinea pigs. Okay. My poor child. <laughs> but yes, we are guinea pigs. But since I have been taking it, I have noticed all kinds of positive effects. And most notably, notably, the fact that I have been able to run down steps. Run down steps. N not walk down. Run down. And for me, that is a really big deal since injury. So we are joined by Mr. Christian Drapo. Drapo. I don't know why I'm having a hard time saying that. Mr. Christian Drapo. And he is a scientist and a pioneer in adult stem cell research. He's also a botanical researcher and the creator of the supplement Revita Blue. Welcome, Mr. Drapo. Hello, it's a great pleasure to be with you. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. Tell me, what are the stem, the role of stem cells in the body? You know, uh, historically, I think it, it's an interesting here to to talk a little bit about what has been traditionally the role of stem cells. We've okay. all learned when you went to med school, when we all go to med school or, or go to school in general, we are told that stem cells... Uh, their their role is to be precursors to blood cells. Mm. But all of this changed about, what, 15, uh, let's say 18 years ago, when scientists started to observe that stem cells not only become blood cells, but they also have the ability to become cells of virtually any tissue in the body. So they are the repair system of the body. Ah, you know, we hear a lot of talk about stem cells and stem cell transplants and those kinds of things like that, but no one really defines it in that way. You call the stem cells our master system of renewal. Yeah? Say more that's, about that. Yeah, that's correct. Say more about that. Well, you know, it, going back to what I was just saying before, mm -hmm. uh, when, when all the discoveries on embryonic stem cells started to show up in the scientific literature, it all started, just to put that into the, the right historical perspective, in 1998, when embryonic, human embryonic stem cells for the first time uh, were able to be, to be multiplied and grown in the lab. Mm -hmm. Before that, it was done with mice, it was done with different animal stem cells, but then with human stem cells, this started around 1998. So it brought back the whole, uh, how could I say, excitement uh, and hope that uh, we could use human uh, stem cells to be able to, to change the course of various diseases. Uh. But at that time, the, the, the stem cells that we have in our body, normally called adult stem cells, yeah. they're, they're not adult. They're, in a newborn, we've got adult stem cells. Wow. So they are the stem cells that exist in a living organism. Okay. So these were considered to be sort of lesser stem cells because they were only able to become cells of the blood, right blood cells, mm -hmm. red blood cells, and platelets. And by the way, that's the definition of a stem cell yes. would be to say, it's a cell that can transform into another type of cell. Mm -hmm. All the other cells of the body don't do that. They are specialized. They do one thing, and that's what they do all their life. And then the only thing that will happen is one day they will die. Mm. So stem cells in the bone marrow were considered to be precursors to blood cells. And then observations start to be made where stem cells from the bone marrow, often seen after a bone marrow transplant, mm. were seen to appear in the heart as heart cells, in the brain as brain cells, in the liver as liver cells. And then, so fast forward 15 years later, what is now very clear is that any time you have an injury of any kind, yeah. then stem cells are called out of the bone marrow, uh. and when they circulate in the bloodstream, they're called to migrate in that tissue to multiply and to become cells of that tissue. How about so that? Just like, exactly. So just like when, when you have a cold or you have a bacterial infection, mm -hmm. your immune system will travel to the site of the, of the infection and will kill the bacteria. Here it's a stem cell repair system where stem cells are called to the site of the injury uh, or the mm. problem and stem cells will simply repair. So it comes to the rescue. Exactly. Okay, so what I'm hearing also is that stem cells are adaptogenic. 
They are. They're adaptogens. This is, okay. Uh, you know, th- this is this is one of the the big discovery, and it's the reason why it is so difficult if you want for that kind of information to really trickle down uh, in in mainstream science because from a scientific standpoint it's almost like taking a cat and saying that you do something and it becomes a horse. (laughs) Stem cells from the bone marrow do not become cells of various tissues. I remember I was lecturing about this maybe 10 about 10 years ago and there's a there's a doctor and it's not a criticism of doctor at all Mm -hmm. uh, but there was a scientist let's say in the room uh, who was taught, like anybody else, that stem cells only make blood cells. And at one point he said, wow. listen, son, let, let me tell you something that obviously nobody seems to be telling you, mm. but you're just an idiot. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> and, and it's, But it's just, I'm saying this just to, uh, to illustrate yes. that it is profoundly novel in medical science, this concept that stem cells from the bone marrow and it's not that they can become cells of other tissue and it's something that they do rarely that they can do, but it's not common. Yes. No, it is something that is happening every day of our lives since the day we are born. Stem cells circulate in the body and they, they just replace cells that are that are being lost. Awesome. You know, and I heard you say in one of your YouTube videos, which are awesome, by the way, that the medical community studies disease. I almost jumped out my seat. I said, like, yes, yes, that's what they do. They study disease. The medical community doesn't study health. I so agree with you. But that's that's our job, right, Mr. Drippo? <laughs> Yeah, and you know, I and again, I I want to to make sure I'm not saying this as a criticism. Of That's the right. System. That's right. It's very difficult. It's very difficult, mm-hmm. almost impossible to study health. Mm-hmm. We cannot take we cannot take 50 people, give them a carrot every day, and six months later say these people are still healthy. Therefore, carrots is good for health. Mm. We can't do that because you could give them a piece of chocolate and they would still be he- healthy six months later. Mm-hmm. So, in order to really study how the body works, you have to to investigate with problems and how you resolve the problem. So the consequence is that we study diseases, but we never study how the body functions normally. Yes. And with with stem cells, where this is uh, this is more uh, important, if I could say, is that stem cells have been studied in the context of diseases, but a lot of observations were made to lead to the conclusion that they're not only playing a role in diseases or when something is broken, they're playing a role every day of our life to simply replace the, the cells that are being lost as part of the natural process of life. Right. So they, play, they play a role in maintenance that is, that is crucial. That's it right there, maintenance. Yeah, and as a stem cell researcher, when did you realize that the stem cells needed specific stem cell nutrition? Well, it, it came uh, it came in a different way, if I could say, because I started mm-hmm. I didn't start by studying stem cells. I started by studying a uh, a natural botanical, a blue green algae uh, yes. that, that I'm sure you know from Planet Lake. Yes. So I started to study this in 1994, 1995, and uh, and we were just trying to understand how that product was working in the body. Mm-hmm. So we did find clear and, and very interesting uh, immune supporting properties. Uh, anti-inflammatory properties, uh, also properties to support the brain. Mm -hmm. Uh, Many people consuming this this blue-green algae were reporting benefits in terms of mental clarity, Uh, better concentration, Mm -hmm. the feeling of of mental energy. Mm -hmm. Uh, But as we were doing all this research, some people started to report benefits that were touching various aspects of human health, like cardiac function, Ah. the lung, liver function, pancreatic function, Mm -hmm. the brain, the skin, the joints. And, and some of these cases were very impressive. So the question emerged as to what is this product doing yes. in the body to lead to benefits touching virtually every single aspect of human health. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we, we did not have any explanation until the day that a colleague of mine sent me uh, a, an article and the title of the, the article was Turning Blood into Brain. Ah. And it was a study in which scientists had observed that after injecting uh, bone marrow stem cells in an animal, some of these stem cells were, were tagged so they can be followed in mm-hmm, the body, mm-hmm. and they ended up in the brain becoming neurons. Wow. And that was a total discovery. So from there, we made two hypotheses. This was uh, 18 years ago. We made two hypotheses, which at the time were completely far-fetched, but they turned out to be true. Yeah. Number one, what if stem cells actually were not only responsible for making blood cells, but what if they were the repair system of the body? What, how and about what that? If, 
exactly. What about that? And what, <laughs> what if this blue-green algae, its mechanism of action was to support the release of stem cells so that if you have more stem cells in circulation and your problem is in the heart, well, the heart will call these cells yes. and your heart will do better. Amen. If somebody else is the pancreas, then the pancreas will do better. Yes. Uh, somebody else is the liver, then the liver will do better. It would explain mm -hmm. why so many different people reported benefit touching so many aspects of human health. How about it? So we started, we started with these two hypotheses and, and both of them turned out to be correct. Mm -hmm. So this blue green algae was working and is working by uh, supporting the natural release of stem cells from the bone marrow. Wow. So that's not... what really led me to study all of that. And so tell us about how you came to create Revita Blue. Well, the moment that we documented uh, the effect of this blue green algae, it, it, it was obvious to me, uh, although it took a number of years before I could continue the research, but it was obvious to me that because we evolved in symbiosis with the environment, mm -hmm. just like there's not only one plant that supports the immune system, right. there's not only one plant that has antioxidants, mm -hmm. it was clear to me that there has to be other plants yes. that also support stem cell function. So how do we find them? Yeah. So I started to ask the question reversed. Uh, with AFA, mm. or with this blue green algae, we had something that had been associated with a lot of, of various benefits. So the question was, what else uh, can we find in terms of plants mm -hmm. uh, in the world that has been historically associated with a broad variety of health benefits? Okay. And uh, about two years ago, uh, I came across, uh, actually, I, I asked a few friends, uh, colleagues from China, mm -hmm. uh, casually, almost jokingly. Uh, I asked two of them, uh, if, you, if you were lost on a desert island and the only thing you had access to is one plant from China, of everything that you know, which one would you bring? And to my, to my total surprise, both of them said, Seabuckthorn Berry. Oh. And I, I had I'd never thought of Seabuckthorn Berry as being that special. So I started to go into scientific literature and looked for what do we know of Seabuckthorn uh -huh. and uh, this discovered that there was a very, very wealthy literature, a, 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 an abundant literature of the use of Seabuckthorn in Tibetan medicine, Mongolian medicine, mm. and Chinese medicine. Okay. So we, we developed an extract, we went into the lab, we tested it, and we found that, uh, that Seabuckthorn, the Seabuckthorn dairy extract that we developed had about twice the efficacy uh, of, uh, of what we had with the blue-green algae that, that we discovered before. That is so, awesome. So... On the basis of that Seabuckthorn berry, uh, we developed Revita Blue. So it's the key ingredient in Revita Blue. Okay. Now I have a question for you from our audience. Would that be okay? A couple of questions? Of course. Claudette from Facebook asks, I have had two stem cell transplants, and now my doctor wants me to have a third transplant. I know I need supplementation, but I do not know what to take. Do you recommend this product? Hmm. Thank yeah, I, I have to be clear before before I, I, I give my opinion on, on this. I am not a medical doctor and I right. don't want this to substitute uh, or to replace in any way, shape or form. But of course, whatever your doctor, any doctor may, may recommend. So purely from a physiological standpoint, uh, what what we have seen historically is that, yes, if you do support the natural function of the bone marrow by releasing stem cells from the bone marrow, uh, it tends to support or to strengthen the bone marrow and help these kinds of, of, of treatments. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say talk to your doctor, but from what I have seen over the past uh, 15, uh, 16 years of, of working with these natural products that support stem cell function, what we see is, is a positive effect. Okay, super. Now, Sylvia from my askthegooddoctor.org um, page asks, if stem cells are so important to our health, why aren't doctors talking more about this to patients? That's a good one, Sylvia. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a very, very simple uh, answer is that if you're not involved or if someone is not involved in, in medical research, then sometimes it's something that we don't see very clearly. Mm -hmm. And it's the fact that it takes time for research to become accepted, then from being accepted to reach academia, from academia that transfers and reach mainstream where people in general hear about it. Yes. When you go to school and if, and if any of the listener can think about their own life, you go to school in a specific domain, a yeah. specific area of whatever science, whatever field. And then as you go on in your life, even if you practice in the very field that you studied, yes. you still move forward 
largely on the basis of what you've learned in college. Absolutely. Um, so uh, virtually any doctor today, uh, and I would say as of probably last time I checked, up to, uh, up to a year or two ago, and if anything, it's probably still the case today, students, med students, are still not told that stem cells are the natural repair system of the mm. body, like your immune system. Mm. This is still not taking place. It is just too recent in the in the whole world of medical research. Okay. Uh, it so so it is it has simply not crossed to from research to mainstream application. Yes. Now this being said, if your doctor is a doctor where I or other people involved in this field of research uh, have given a lecture and these doctors were there could ask questions. It is difficult for me to believe that somebody who has seen all that information would not then uh, recommend this or at least be in a position to explain it to their patient. And right. then from there, there's a whole other layer, which is the fact that it is not available as a prescription. It is available as a dietary supplement. So you need to have a doctor who really works within the realm of, of considering dietary supplements as being effective That's right. uh, effective tools in in the whole management of health mm -hmm. so there's there are many layers here to to, to you know to, to the answer to this question yes i agree with that i agree with that well thank you sylvia and claudette for your questions now you know you're with the Revital Blue is available through a company called Jeunesse Global. And, you know, I have known this company for many years for their incredible skin care products. How did you team up with them? Well, I team up with them because uh, it's a, Jeunesse is a company that if you really look at all their products, and, and since working with them, I've started to really look at their product uh, very closely. Uh, they are, it, it's a company that does innovation, and mm -hmm. they're searching for products that will be at the cutting edge of scientific research or health research. Yes. Uh, and in that way, uh, the, the, the desire to have a product that would have an effect on stem cells came essentially from, from a lot of their consumers uh, and then key people in the company looking at what was on the cutting edge of, of, uh, of, mm -hmm. uh, of dietary supplements in, ter in terms of research. Mm -hmm. And uh, so basically we then started to talk. Uh, I knew people that were part of Jeunesse and through these contacts then we started to discuss, and uh, and they were interested to uh, uh, to have a product on stem cells. And on my end, uh, you know, it, it ties with the question that we just had before. Why is my doctor not talking about this? Yes. And it's because it's too new. So if it is too new, if you put an ad uh, uh, in a magazine or even you yeah. put a bottle on the shelf that says this product is for your stem cell, nobody understands. <laughs> That's what it right. Means. It, you need education about these things. And that's why you're today, here today. <laughs> exactly. Nobody, t most, most consumers cannot really explain what that's is right. an antioxidant, oh. but even everybody will take their antioxidant. Yes. And that's because there are two decades of education making people understand that they need to have the antioxidant, although they do not understand from a chemical or biochemical standpoint what they really do in the body. All right. It's the same thing here. Until people have heard enough about what stem cells are, what they do in the body, and how important it is to support their role in the body, mm -hmm. until people have heard this uh, enough, then education is needed. So a system of distribution like Jeunesse is giving the platform to be able to convey that kind of education. So it was, it was a, a really good team for me to team with Jeunesse to, to put this kind of information out in the marketplace. Mm. How did you become such a staunch advocate for... Um, herbal remedies and such. I mean, because as a scientist, you could have gone either way. We have two minutes. Give me give me one minute, the quick story. I, I've just always been interested in plants. And, and when I came across this blue green algae and I saw what it could do in cases where oftentimes even medicine could not do anything. And when I saw the results, I, I saw this as so powerful that, that I just had to, to continue in that field of research. Yes. So it's it basically... The real effect and the benefits to me has been has been the driving force. Okay, that that is beautiful because I thank you for your brilliant mind and I thank you for coming in this direction instead of going in the other. And it and it took your love of plants to be able to do it so that you could articulate this beautiful work and be able to express yourself. I thank you because I love this product.